Hey guys, welcome to the show. A uh, couple things. I don't know when this episode's going to get released. Uh, I have it marked down for March 13th, so I'm going to promote the shows that I know are in the books. Uh, May 4th through May 6th, I'll be at the Milwaukee Improv with TJ Miller. Uh, you can book your tickets now at the Milwaukee Improv website or TJ Miller does not have a website dot com. Uh, I'll also get them on KeithRaza.com as soon as I can. Um, that's all I got for, for, oh, you could see me on, what day is it? May 12th at the rec room with Alan Havy. That would be fun. That would be cool. So you could get tickets at www.recroomhp.com. Uh, my guest today, you've seen him on Comedy Central and you've seen him on MTV. Uh, you've also probably seen him streaming. The great Morgan J will be here via Zoom. And it's going to be a lot of fun to chit-chat with him. And uh, if you guys like the show, subscribe, rate, review, tell a friend. Also, I'm on Cameo. Uh, get those Cameos in. And I would love to give out birthday shout-outs and all that stuff. All right, guys. We'll see you guys next week. Enjoy the show. You're listening to Razor Riffs with Keith Razor and Alan Lee right here on LA Talk Radio. Hey, what's up, man? Hey, Morgan. How you doing, buddy? Let me just make sure I have that. Check, check. I get here. How are you? Uh, oh, it's through a different... Hold on a second. This isn't the right microphone. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> how does it sound? Oh, so how does it sound now? It sound sounds better? good. How are you? I'm good, man. What's yeah. up? Not much. Thank you so much for doing it. I really appreciate it. I know you, you get like, uh, especially right now, I see you on all the podcasts and all the Zoom shows. So I know you're very busy right now. That's, uh, I mean, that's good. It's good. It's a good thing to be busy. So that's what that's what, that's what I'm trying to do. Uh, you know? I, I like your neon sign that has your name on it. Oh, thanks, dude. I, I had gotten that for my, my comedy special uh, because... Uh, we just wanted to have a nice little touch of, I don't know, like cool little things that, to have there. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, um, and so, so basically, yeah. So now I have it forever, including the cardboard cutout. That was for the comedy special as well. Yeah. That, uh, that, that's a cool nightlight too. You know? <laughs> oh, that I know. Well, actually it, it is actually pretty nice, uh, to have like, if I I'm, I'm worried cause it, I'm not worried. There's so many things to worry about, but. Uh, I wonder how long it will last for. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Because like, I got it. For, I got it from like China. I got it on Amazon. I mean, I think they just make it in China. Oh, uh, so you're worried you know it's gonna I mean? burn out or something? Yeah, yeah. But I. But when I'm doing stuff like this, I, I pop it on, and so I feel like it gives a nice little touch. Yeah. For the podcast, for for whatever we're we're doing a recording. You know what I mean? I should get one for myself. I think that's cool. I always wanted to have a lava lamp. Have you, do you remember lava lamps? Bro, I'm 36. Of course, I remember lava lamps. You're crazy. <laughs> I always want a lamp full of lava. Yeah, um, but no, no, it's it's uh, it's it's good. Things are good. Getting ready to release a comedy special. We're almost done with that. And uh, just let me know what you want to talk about today, man. Or or also, do you know how long we're recording for? Or we're doing this? Uh, for? Just 30, 45, whatever you want. That's do. fine. Yeah, that sounds yeah. good. Okay, cool. You know, I, I just, I, I have some questions and, you know, obviously I wanted to talk about the comedy special and, uh, you know, all that Definitely. jazz. Definitely. But I, I, I wanted to ask you this question because I had an argument with my friend and I, I'm one of those guys where like, I don't argue unless I know I'm right. You know what I mean? Sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I, I, I could have sworn you had another name. Like I like it was Morgan J something, and then he said you didn't, and I I could have sworn when I saw you do stand up like nine or ten years ago you had another name too. I did. It was Morgan Venti Cinque. Okay, so I was right. 
You're at, you're one hundred percent right. Yeah. Morgan so. J. Venti Cinque. Yeah. That's my that's my full real name. And um don't you forget. Don't you forget <laughs> about it. Don't you fucking forget it. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean I I was just like, no, because like I it's one of those things where because like I remember I also remember you just did straight stand up. Now you do guitar. You know what I mean? This is true. Yeah. Um, this is uh, very true. So, uh, about six years in, I decided to, sw I didn't really decide to switch permanently, but I, I definitely was like, let me um, try this out because I had auditioned for JFL two years in a row uh, and nothing happened. And I, I don't know. I just had these expectations. That something should happen but nothing happened and so uh so basically i just was kind of like annoyed with comedy and you know i wasn't i wasn't a bad stand-up i sure i certainly wasn't like you know the best but i was doing okay if i was getting yeah. j if i was getting jfl auditions i was i was and they were like from referrals or they weren't like there's no reps or anything this there was no industry voodoo going on like these friends had recommended me and um I don't know. So creatively, I was like, oh, I'm just telling these same six minutes over and over. I'm just working on the same material over and over. Uh, I don't know. I just got kind of tired of it. So um, so the guitar helped you bring in a new ledge of comedy into your act. Yeah, but, um, basically, you know, but when I when I did the when I did the guitar, it wasn't like I am this person now. I, I, I gave myself permission to be like, if, if this isn't good or if I don't like it, then you don't have to do it. Also, that was kind of scary because you know how com comedians are about music comedy, yeah. which is interesting because it's like there's so many really great musical comedians. There's a lot of bad ones, but you know, I think it's just like any other. Art I think I think musical comedy is very unique, and I think you know, like you, you pull it off really, really well. And you, you know, when you see you live, you're like, oh my god, that was a great live experience, and that's the uniqueness that you want at a comedy show. Yeah, I, no, no, hundred percent. Yeah, I don't really like musical comedy when it's like a comedy competition, and you know what I mean. And then yeah, like I mean, look, I I, I I literally did a last comic standing type show called Bring the Funny. Uh, I've done multiple like comedy competitions, and um, they're just kind of not conducive to music comedy. If you want to yeah. do one, if you want to do one song, or if you want to do, if you really want to like. I don't know, make it musical. You know what I mean? Could you imagine Bo Burnham doing a comedy competition? <laughs> no, not at all. It would, it would never work, dude. It, it, it's just like a, it's a longer form kind of thing. I mean, I had, I got, uh, I auditioned for America's Got Talent by special like invite, you know? So I just sort of cut the line to do the whole, the, the, the casting call type thing. Right. But, uh, you know, you only get 90 seconds and then, then it's just, it just doesn't work. I don't know. People don't realize that, like, when you, because you, when you're doing 90 seconds at a club, it actually goes by fast. But at an audition, it takes, like, it takes a lot. Yeah. It feels yeah, like a long time. Like... Yeah. <laughs> no, it, it, uh, although I'll tell you what, I saw another musical comedian on the show and he did a song. I forget the guy's name and it was all right. Uh, yeah. but it was like, man, if, if they're, if this guy can do this, why, why am I like, holding off yeah. uh you know um so i i thought about reaching out again to do it again because I, I feel like i have material now that that even if i got i don't know even if i was just used to to boo off or to, to get an x it would still be really good exposure you know what I oh mean? yeah definitely like people don't go on that show to win i think they go on it to get on two or three episodes and then purposely lose and look there there's <laughs> some people who you know definitely will win and I think the producers know who that is, whoever has a good story, whoever has like, you, you know, it's not enough to be talented on these shows. You know, you got to have that, that, you know, that's that against all odds story. You know, you have to be homeless or overcome cancer or be an orphan or, or, or like some sort of thing they like to see, you know, oh, we're raising money for this, or this or this or this. I'm not knocking it, but it seems like that's kind of the energy of the show. Um, right. And I, I don't know if my story is like, I don't like have, you know, I don't, my dad died, but it's like, 
<laughs> but but I'll, but like you know, people die all the time. So I, yeah. I don't know if that'd be. I don't know if that'd be enough. I think yeah, a good yeah. story is is because uh, like when you move to L.A. I mean, obviously you move you moved uh, to do pursue comedy, but then you move cause, like because you got engaged or something, something like I that. Moved, I moved here for a girl. Uh, yeah. If if we deduce it down to the brass tacks, uh, yeah, I moved here and then she really broke my heart, you know, and uh, but but also the, the plan was to move here eventually, so I think you know. I was using her as an excuse to to really come here, but it's it's either where you look at it, you know, like did I follow a girl out of here? Maybe did I come out here for my career? Definitely, uh, you know. Sometimes people come into your life; they're catalysts. They do something; they change things up for you. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Uh, well, I get that. I think though, if you were to go on America's Got Talent, because I don't I don't believe and uh, comedians ever won that show, but I do believe a musical comic could win that show. They might be able to, you know? but at this point in my career, I don't know if it would be, it would be the the right. I mean, I don't know. Man. I mean, who knows, man? Uh, uh, at this point, things are with 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 comedy and. The way you could reach your fans, I don't honestly know what the the answers are anymore. I mean, ninety percent of my ticket sales come from TikTok now. Yeah, you know, I I, you, I suppose you mastered TikTok. You were one of the first uh, main people to master that. I I got on early, but I think the end of twenty nineteen, mid twenty nineteen. If you got on around then, that it would have been like the start of the gold. I got on consistently twenty twenty in April, but. I was as far as comedians go, I was up I was on there early. Yeah. Um, putting clips up. And I know a lot of comedians who were like, I'm not doing this. I don't want to be posting clips like this and scr and, and then literally last month Vulture released an article about how, you know, the 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 internet has just become a bunch of crowd work clips. Yeah. And and I'm not saying that's not that's false, but it's just kind of like you know what are you supposed to do as a comedian put out your put out your material every day and then burn right. it and then you know so for me the crowd work is just is just an excuse to uh bring people to the live show so they could see the full hour and the feedback i get from those are are, are basically like this is so much better than we thought it was going to be we didn't really know what to expect we thought you were going to just be like a TikToker, this and that but you know like the special that's going to be coming out it's basically an hour of music there's no you know there's a there's a minimal, and if there is crowd work, it's weaved into the songs. Right. It's not like um, I have nothing to talk about. You know what I mean? It's it's weaved in there. Uh, didn't you do a, a special where you did songs with crowd work? Yeah. So the, so I, I have two albums out. One of them is also a comedy special that you could watch on YouTube. And um, I started that special with five minutes of crowd work before we got into the song. Mm -hmm. but I, I specifically wanted the next special to not start that way. While there is crowd work, I wanted the crowd work to be like in the opening song, if that makes sense. Yeah. So there's definitely more crowd work in the first special than the second special. Um, but I think in the last special, it's, it's, it's more uh, inconspicuous. And right. I think it, it serves the overall... Um, art of the of the the show and, and i'm I, I couldn't be more proud of it i'm so excited about it and also the first special that you're referencing that i put out i put out uh in 2020 uh during the pandemic and for me it was like uh i didn't even plan to put it out but i had just been sitting on this material for a long time for over a year and i was like oh well at this point who cares now so i put it out people watched it and then uh it was good. I mean, it was, it was, it, the feedback was good. Um, you know, that was, and yeah, it was good. I don't really know what else to say about it, but it was good. Yeah. Would you say that the pandemic, like, even though it, it's a, it's a horrible thing, but would you say like, in a way it really helped guys like you, for example, because you've mastered all this streaming and all this zoom shows and all that stuff. For me, definitely helped out. Um, I've been doing this a while. I've never felt like I, I never felt like I had the backing of the industry behind me. Right. Uh, and uh, I was never really a comics comic. There's a lot of people who 
you know, I would reach out to who didn't book me. There's, you know, there's just, I, you know, it's different. Um, but I think that's, but I think, I think that what the pandemic taught me was, you know, wash your hands, you wear a mask and think, no, I think that it was sort of like, a, <laughs> not what the pandemic taught me was that you, you kind of have to, no, nobody's going to save you. Nobody's going to discover you. Nobody's going to, you can't be waiting for stuff. Yeah. And you just have to make your own opportunities. So, um, you know, I said yes to every virtual Zoom event. And I was, and if I'm being totally honest, I think in 2021, I think my income from virtual comedy was somewhere between like 30 and $50,000. Wow. And that's just all because I said yes to the gigs that uh, everybody else said no to. Right. And eventually you just learn how to work in this little space right it's just another stage it's just different and um and i still do virtual events i don't do as many as i did but I, you know i'll do like one or two a month and i mean those those events pay my rent you know yeah. and, and it allows me to do all this other stuff so um especially if you don't have a set or something you could just do do a zoom show that night and just be like all right you know what i mean yeah, and, and even then I'll stream on Twitch, you know, I'll, I'll do like a songwriting session on Twitch and TikTok because all, all of that helps, right? So, you know, you get in from, I get income from YouTube, TikTok, uh, Twitch, Instagram. It's not like a substantial amount at the moment, but... Um, but it will be. But it will be. And, 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 and the fact is like people have less money now. They don't have as much money as they did to go out and buy tickets i mean look to go out to a comedy club it's going to be like a hundred to two hundred dollar night for the average person right you know you're buying the ticket you're buying food you might have to buy a baby you might have to get a babysitter you might have to pay for parking you know you drive some people drive hours to do this because they live in a town where there's nothing so they're going to drive to the closest city yeah. and um so for the so they might be able to do that but for the people who, for there's like 10 times as many people who can't do that and so right. You know, going on Twitch and doing some live performances and going on TikTok and doing stuff like that. I, I think it's really beneficial and, and I think it's going to kind of be a little bit of the future of, I think, performance because especially I'm thinking about like deep fake and AI now like jokes. Before you know it, like all of the stuff can be deep faked, you know? Yeah. And I think like the only genuine authentic interaction is going to be like a live experience, whether it's virtual or in person. But I, I don't think those two are going to be mutually exclusive. I think like you can do a virtual live show and have both of them. You know what I mean? So. I agree. Like when I first started, I used to do like a whole bunch of comp tickets. And like I tell every com like new comic who does this now, like don't do that. Just believe in yourself and sell tickets because it's harder now that I'm trying to sell tickets. Everyone expects free tickets. You know what I mean? Yeah, but uh, you know – I'll say this, when you offer something for free, it devalues in the in the audience's mind the what they're going to see. Does that make right. sense? So like sometimes people but you don't learn that until you get older. Yeah, it's really interesting. It's like you, it's it's uh cuz I would be do I'd be like, "Oh, come to a free show, free show." And then to them it's like, "Oh, this is probably it's free. This is probably going to be trash." Right. Why, what you know what I mean? Whereas like now, I, you know, I don't do any sort of comp. I don't even do codes like discount codes. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, who can see the show can see the show. I mean, like I think, you know, now for the big cities, I'm averaging about 300 tickets for like a one nighter, like on a Wednesday or a Sunday. Right. Which is, yeah. I think it's pretty good for. That's great like for Wednesday, Sundays. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, and I, so that's just kind of what I'm doing. I'm I'm, tr I'm going to be doing a weekend in Arizona and a weekend in D.C. I kind of already know that I don't like weekends. However, uh, it is, like, good for me because I can get a ton of material and a ton of clips, you know? Right. So I'll film, you know, I'll film all those shows. Because from one show, I could probably mine about 10 clips and uh, – you know the the you, you, I don't even you know if you look at some of the comics like Mark Norman and Sam Morrill and uh, who else like Stavros and um, Nimesh, right. uh, 
I'm, I feel like those comics, and I might be mistaken, but I, I heard this with the grapevine, like they'll do their act and then either at the beginning or the end of the show, they'll do like a Q and a, like, what do you want to hear jokes? Like, what do you want to talk about? So, oh, that's so, cool. Cool. so I know for sure, like a comic does that where, so like for them, they're just trying to get some clips for the internet at the very end of the show. Like they can do their act, but then they can also do some, some like improvised stuff or fuck around. And you know, look, what the what the people who who on their phone what the people on their phone what they see is you know like a finished edited product but you know I'll do you you'll do five shows in a weekend each an hour long so that's five hours for you know ten good clips that yeah. are, so for like ten minutes of postable material you know what I mean yeah so, it, it's yeah. Uh, it's interesting that you mentioned how some comics are doing that Q and A thing because when I, uh. I mean, he didn't do it every show, but he did like two or three times when I when I worked with Norm. Uh, Kevin Nealon would come in and do a Q and A after the show. And yeah, like, we tried to record it for the podcast or whatever, but we never released any of that. So, yeah, I think when it's that um, when you you know you're that big, I think you you can do that. I don't do that yet, but. Um... I should start just making up a song uh, every show. Maybe it will go well. <laughs> what do I? I mean, what do I have to lose? Like literally, I have everything to gain. I have clips, a new bit. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, so uh, I wanted to ask you because I, I saw a clip where you were on the street interviewing people, and you were asking them a question, and uh, it was maybe like three or four minutes. But I thought that that. Do you know what I'm talking about? Because I thought that that would be a great show for you that you could probably pitch. Uh, was I was I like in a speedo? Like how long ago was this? Yeah, it was like it was like uh. Was I, I in Central know. Park? It was in Venice Beach, I think, or Huntington uh, Beach, or something like that. It was, was like, it like a, was I doing like a game show or was yeah, it? Yeah, like... it was like one of the questions you asked. Uh, would you rather breed milk oh, or would lay you... an egg? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, I did that as like a little experiment and yeah. it was it was good. You know, that's another thing, right? With content like the man on the street stuff. Uh I I could probably be really successful in that area, but I've always felt a certain level of discomfort. It's so interesting, like in the crowd when I'm on stage, the context is there that I could talk to the strangers. Right. But when you're doing when you're walking down the street and you just pick some people out, it feels like uh I'm being intrusive and annoying. Right. So, because a lot of those questions, a lot of those people, I don't, I just like, I, I get it. And, and it, and again, it's just a means to an end, right? It's like, we're going to get more ticket sales, brand awareness, get people to know who I am. Um, but it just seems like a, it's just, I got to just suck it up and do this and, and make you get better at that skill and not worry. Yeah. yeah, I thought it was hilarious, and I thought like that would be a nice, uh, unique show, kind of like Cash Cab, where maybe you could pitch it. You know what I mean? But well, I do have an idea for something like that. I just have been sleeping on it. I, I, I you know, I think I made enough money where like I lost my ambition, <laughs> and it was it wasn't even that much. I didn't even need that much. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, which is really funny. Um, but. I'm trying to find like, how do we go deeper? How do we go further? How do we, you know what I mean? We got to really build this career up. We got people yeah. to take care of. So uh, I definitely think I got to get back on that. Um, yeah, there's a lot of different things, man. There's a lot of different things you can do. We're, we are going to employ that strategy when my special starts coming out because I want to have clips like that. All right. Uh, yeah. That'd be, so. that'd be awesome. Now, when, when you recorded this special, uh, you said you, this is your third special, right? It's my th gonna be my second live special third album. Third album, okay. So let's just say it's considered the third special because you have three other. Which one? Like this, this stuff is probably the stuff you're most proud of, right? Like yeah, this third one. I'm, this third one, I'm really happy with. Yeah, okay. yeah, I'm excited about it. Yeah. So how how does that? Because I have one. I have one hour. I have one one hour special and one thirty minute special. And I'm very proud of the hour special, but I hate the 30 minute special, like with a passion. Like, why, do you think, hate, why do you hate it? I think I filmed it too, when I was too young and I wasn't ready. And I felt like you could see that. 
Yeah, but but uh, I mean, look, if you listen to my first album and then my second one and then this third one, you're going to see like an incredible amount of growth. And I think, um, you know, if you listen to Justin Bieber singing, baby, 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 oh, <laughs> and then you hear him singing what his tracks are today, then it's just part of the growing process. You know what I mean? Uh, and I bet there's moments in that 30 minute special where people are probably like, oh, this is one of my favorite bits. You know what I mean? Uh, I hope so. I don't. I mean, I wa I watched it. Recently. You know what? Now that I think about it, it is bad. It is bad. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it's terrible, dude. And I and I, I don't want to feed into that negativity that you're you're dishing out. But you're you're right. It sucks. <laughs> I'm sorry. I appreciate that. <laughs> no, I mean, look. There's definitely parts of my first album and my my first live special that I feel a little bit cringy about that feel very amateur to me, but. Um, you know, it, there was a lot of good stuff too. Like, you know, I was, that was my first time doing a special. The second one, this one I did this year uh, in, in December, I felt like a true professional. I felt like I kind of, you know, vaulted and landed and the this, everything was kind of clean, yeah. you know? Uh, so, yeah. Well, I have three more questions I wanted to ask you. And sure. So, uh, comedy festivals, you, you've done a lot of comedy festivals and I wanted to ask you, cause I've done a couple and I think they're fun and all, but it seems like comedy festivals is where everyone like is trying to go into. Would you say that the comedy festivals helped you grow as a comic or would you say they're just another gig? A little bit. Um, yeah. I mean, I think they're just sort of things to put on your, your comedy resume. Um, yeah. I, I've won a couple of comedy specials, a comedy, uh, festivals where, you know, the, the prize money was pretty good actually. Um, I won some little song, I've, I've won a couple of things. I've done a couple of different festivals. Uh, but unless like the industry, cause the industry will go to some of these festivals, but, but dude, now it's like, if you have a decent following and you're moving tickets, I think they could kind of care less about the festivals now. Right. I mean, like if you look at somebody like Trevor Wallace, I don't think Trevor ever really did a festival. Right. I mean, he's, he's done fest. I think he's done festivals now, but he hadn't done, you know, like laughing skull. Right. Or big sky. Or, you know what I mean? Or I don't even know if he did JFL. Uh, because he's moved past that that stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So, so like I'm doing a festival in Houston. Uh, at the end of March, but there's a part of me that's like, why am I doing this when I could just book my own show and sell 300 tickets in Houston? Right. You know what I mean? And make more money. So. But then the other part of you is thinking, I'm doing this so the Houston comics could say they were on a festival with Morgan J. <laughs> no, I mean, not even like, I think at the time the thinking was, my, my agent was like, hey, I can't, I can get you into this festival, but they kind of, before the, the Houston club like offers you a headlining spot, they want to see like you at the festival. And I was like, all right. But now like the way my tickets are selling because I kind of had a big old little come up in October and September last year. Right. Uh, yeah, so now with the way things are selling, it's like, it's just a different thing. That's why um, I've stopped booking tour dates right now. Uh, I have a couple on my website, but I just told my agents, I'm like, let's just do a fall tour. These are the cities I want to hit. We'll do about 20 in a month and a half. We'll figure it out. Okay. Um, I don't like to travel, but there is a part of me that is like super grateful for my fans because I do have fans now and uh, I feel like I owe it to them. You know what I mean? Yeah. They want to see me live and the shows are actually really fun. You know what I mean? And uh, what's your favorite, what's your favorite city to go out? Like Dude, the city you I'm just know to go out, you'll have a fun it no matter what. If I'm being totally honest now, I've traveled so much that when I go to a city, I do the show when I go to the hotel. Like I don't really do anything. I, really? I'm so lame. And especially, and, and I, there's a couple of reasons for that. A, 
if I have to do like multiple shows in a row, I don't want to blow my voice out. I don't want to like get too drunk. I don't even really drink because it's all my it's all voice stuff. If you got to do a, if you got to do a weekend of shows where you have to sing, not only do you sing, but you got to meet people after the show. Uh, and you know, by the end of show three, your voice, you know, I already know friends whose voices get shot. They can't do it. Yeah. So when I get ready for touring or weekends or stuff, I'm doing an, a, a Prilosec treatment where I'm doing like taking omeprazole for like, cause I have acid reflux. I am running, doing vocal exercises and I'm eating healthy. I know this sounds lame, but all of this, you like you can't unless because like Nate Bargatze, for example, doesn't have to do that because his act is super chill. It's he it's so low energy in the per, in the best way. Right. Where he could easily do. He doesn't yell. He doesn't. He doesn't really like. You know what I'm saying? It, it's like nice. But I'm singing. I'm like doing a bunch of vocal stuff with my my voice. That it's it's I can't do that. So yeah. I have to I be always, super careful about it. I always loved doing uh, Vegas because uh, when you're on tour with Norm McDonald, you know, you, you there's a lot of perks to it, but it's also like a lot of anxiety and stuff. And Vegas was so fun because after the show, you could take him to go play poker. You could actually sleep for seven hours. And then when you wake up, he'll still be playing poker. <laughs> did, he, did he gamble like that? Oh, yeah. Hardcore. He was gambling like that, huh? Yeah, yeah, but did he have money? Was he like Vegas. bankrupt, or I mean, I'm so curious about that. My dad gambled all of our money away. Really? So I uh, stay away from casinos. I'm worried that I'll have that that bug. No, I mean he he won a lot. He lost a lot too. But I mean that that was one of his favorite hobbies. He probably loved that more than doing stand up. Was just playing cards. It's fun. It's yeah. fun. It's so, fun. So like you know, Vegas was always fun because I knew he had a babysitter and I didn't have to be there. I could just sleep. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Why? Well, yeah, I will say I've never really opened for anybody. I think I've only opened for one comic, uh, in my whole career. Um, and he, he goes out to party, but I, I don't also, right. I don't think he wants me partying with him. So, right. um, I just go to the hotel or I find my own thing to do. Me personally, I like like a nice dinner and, you know, opening is a good gig if you can find if you find a good big headliner to open for. It could be pretty chill. Yeah. You know. So. All right, and then I have two more quick questions. This one's actually a quick question. My friend Dan on Facebook said he met you in Austin, and he wanted to know how come you've never been to Portland. I don't know what that meant, but he wanted me to ask you that. I don't know. I was, I, but I was in Portland. Oh, you've been in Portland? He's a fucking liar. Oh, okay, cool. No, <laughs> no, I, I was in Portland uh, in uh, November, I think. I was headlining or beginning of December. I don't know. I was there uh, in the winter or oh. in, the, in the fall. Maybe was cool. he was trying to say go back to Portland so he could see you in Portland. I don't know. Oh, yeah. No, but, Portland was cool. All right. And then my last question for you, Morgan J, is if you could go in a time machine and go back to talk to Morgan J either from yesterday or, you know, when you first started, what would you say to give yourself what you know now? Um, I would say it's not that serious. It's never, okay. that, it's not that serious, bro. It's never that serious. I'm telling you, dude, chill. It's not that serious. All right. It's hard to have perspective, but it's just not that serious. Yeah. That's good advice you know so, so where can the f folks at home follow you and uh watch your new special when it comes out so make just go to morganj.com morganjay.com the new special we haven't set an exact release date or a location it will ultimately end up on youtube at some point we don't know if the ex the release is going to be there we're going to shoot for the stars and we're going to send it to netflix and all the other streamers uh but there i think ultimately it will end up there so Google me, go to my YouTube channel, subscribe to me there. Uh, I'm trying to branch out with my content on that channel and with music and other things. And um, that's it. You know, that's all you got to do. I could yeah. say that now. Google me. I don't have a wiki. I don't have a wiki page yet, but we're almost there. I said yeah. Google me. Yeah. <laughs> I think uh, wiki pages that that's that's uh, that's, that's the people... hallmark of when you made it, dude. Yeah. But then people could like write 
unknown facts that you didn't even know about yourself. <laughs> I love it. I cannot. I, maybe I do have a more uh, wiki page. Let's find out. It's uh, like, oh, Morgan J has 12 fingers. And you're like, oh, I do? <laughs> yeah, no, I don't. I don't. But I'd be showing up. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be showing up. Well, Morgan, thanks so much for talking with me. And, no, uh, thank you, man. Yeah, it really helped me out as a comic, and I know that you get you know a lot of podcast requests. I know everyone and their mother has a podcast, so thank you for doing my. No, of course, man. I know I'm happy to do it, I'm, and I'm glad you reached out. And uh, I'll catch you at a show sometime, man. All right, buddy. Well, I'll see you later, man. All right, I'll see you later. All right, bye, Morgan. Bye, buddy. All right, all right, guys. That was an interview with Morgan J. Subscribe, rate, review, and tell a friend. And we'll see you guys next week. You're listening to Razor Riffs with Keith Razor and Alan Lee right here on LA Talk Radio.